Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, come one, come all, happy almost Christmas or holidays or whatever you're celebrating, Hanukkah's over, so I think right now there's either Kwanzaa, Christmas, and maybe Festivus for the rest of us. Elon, Hanukkah's in here. <laughs> And it's, it's the light happening. that keeps on giving. It's always <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the times that we uh, close out the year, Guy and I get uh, introspective. So we figured we'd get introspective extra extrovertly and talk about some of the things that have been coming up and what we've noticed in our lives and how we're looking to close out the year and start the new one. So we thought we'd have a, a conversation around that. And um, yeah, so you want to share with them a bit of, of your, your last? Uh, no, you go first. Five, five months or four months? No, you go first. Me go first. I, I, I've been sharing nonstop about my shenanigans. This whole, this whole podcast, I've owned the podcast for six months. Just talking, <laughs> just talking about all the challenges I've been going through. All right. Um, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Uh, we, I think one of the greatest uh, gifts that we've given ourselves uh, and cultivated over the last five, six years is this ability to be with that which is. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't just mean life circumstances. It also means things that are uh, happening internally for ourselves. So a lot of the things that we work with our, our coaches and mentors and, and thus also train our clients also is this ability to kind of see like the, the full gamut of the emotional scale that humans have. And what I find to be very curious is obviously our ability to be with those things gets enhanced through the years. And at the same time, when the parts come that really want to be seen or the things really want to be felt, it, it's still always testing because we're in a constant state of expansion. And so like, if you told me that I needed to face emotions or things that were happening maybe two years ago, right now to me, that would be like, I, I don't even know that that would create like a little titter, you know, it'd just be like, whatever. Sure. And at the same time, I think what, what we kind of experienced, uh, individually and collectively over the last, I'd say probably since May, June, roughly around that time, right? So yeah. like a, a good part of uh, half a year uh, has been has been incredibly challenging. And now that we're kind of like coming out the other side of it or, you know, having come through it, uh, it really makes you just stop and appreciate everything that you've gone through and all the work that we've put in and how we we went through it this time, which was very new and very different, both as individuals and uh, together when we were in an interact together. And it's been um, it's been magical and profound. And I always say this, like if 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 someone came up to you and said, hey, listen, this is what you're going to have to go through. And if you go through it, this is what will be given to you. Like, like the prize at the end of it, right? I think most of us would sign up for it because the reward at the end is always so just kind of like, oh my God, I've never felt this level of ease or peace or well-being or bliss, or I've never received this much abundance so effortlessly and easily, or I've never had like such love and care in my relationships. And in order to get to that place is the challenge. And it's always interesting just to kind of remember as you're going through it. And I think we've just gone through something really profoundly beautiful, both as individuals and in our business. Um, and now being on the other side of it, it's just like, wow, okay, that's why we went through 
all of that. So yeah. I know I kind of laid the framework. I didn't go into like the specifics of it, but um, yeah. What's that old adage they say about life? Like life gives you the tests, but it doesn't tell you to prepare for it. Like, yeah. or something. And I'm, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing it incorrectly. It's, like that, yeah. It sounds more clever than that when you actually hear it, but I'm sure we all know. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I felt like this, you know, when uh, I've been watching a lot of old Rocky clips, do you ever watch old clips from movies? There's like, sometimes I just want to send you old movies that we watch together, but I don't because I'm like, I'm just going to waste this time by watching these stupid clips. Like I'll go back and watch like old cartoon clips, like old cartoon introductions, like, like things that it's, I don't do this too often, but once in a while I go down like holes of like cartoons from my childhood. Anyway, I'd say all Maniacs? this. Because, what? Animaniacs. I've done Animaniacs, but I like, like really obscure things that you haven't thought about in a long time. And then they pop in your head and you're like, oh yeah. And then I go watch the intro and I'm like, oh wow, that's so 80s. Um, but I've been watching, uh, like Rocky clips, three, four, five, even Creed. And I say this because the, the montage, I feel like I've been in a training montage <laughs> for, for, for six straight months. That 80s montage. Yeah. Like I got it. It's the best. It's still like, I, I legitimately went and found remixes for Eye of the Tiger because like wow. it's still as good to watch those montages as ever before granted when you watch them fighting in the ring you realize they were like six feet away from each other no it's like so far away it's it's hilarious the, the fighting back in the day but um i feel like i've been in the ring with drago we went 12, 12 rounds and i made it through and it wasn't and it wasn't necessarily about suffering but like what elon said is you know we uh, i specifically um did some really deep healing work this year elon as well i mean the, the changes i've seen in elon really over this last year but i mean the number of years but like this year like has expounded you know like uh in in ways i could not have imagined and, and it's so clear uh in our relationship because you know when you're siblings you guys, you know, bring your siblings to mind or bring a family to mind. There's, there's the dance that you do. You know, when you say this or you respond that way, there's a way that they respond. There's the way that they react. And in, in previous times of my life where I've been through really challenging emotional places, um, I don't think it's, you know, out, out of league to say like Elon's response has always been avoidance. Like that's his attachment system. Mine is like anxiety. So of course, the more anxiety I have and more anxiousness I have, like Elon goes into avoidance more. And you can map that onto just like any relationship, right? And like, it was just amazing to be in that in that place. And I could tell you like what I always wanted from Elon. And I remember we, we had this breakthrough, like landmark day one, yeah. you went yeah. to landmark. And, and when I was really depressed in high school, like Elon's, one of his first breakthroughs was like our relationship. Yeah. And I remember he told me, he goes, I didn't realize you needed me there. Uh, I thought by like giving it attention, yeah, I made it worse. Like, remember something to that effect? He thought like I, if he- I basically like when guy was in his thing, I thought that if I kind of- uh, Operated the story, so to speak. Yeah, like like almost like give him pity or all that stuff. It would just like drive that story. And I knew that that wasn't real. So I was just like, I'm not going to give it to him. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you know, in that moment, he kind of realizes that um, like I really needed him there to support me. And to some effect, we've done that dance our whole lives, right? Even in business and, um, I, you know, things scare me, <laughs> like it's spooked more easy than Elon and stuff like that. And, and so there's always been this response, which sometimes turns into like hostility between us. And, you know, like I went into this, like, like really deep emotional places this year, like reached down to emotional places I have not experienced probably since, since I was a little boy. Not, not, I don't have a memory of, of ever doing that before, but I, like, you know, the, the body remembers and just like watching the way that Elon showed up and the way that my wife showed up and like just this like incredible system of support this time uh, was so different than any other time in my life. You know, like everything was done with compassion. Everything was done with love. Everything was done with support. Um, and that was life altering because like Elon and I say this all the time, like you cannot heal yourself. Like there's only so much any of us can really do with our interpersonal practices, with meditation, with personal understanding and personal wisdom. Like there's, there's, there's a limit to it. Why? Because there's only, there, there's an energetic and mental and physical template in your body that you acquired over this lifetime. And so we're all stuck in those biases and it's very difficult to step out of that realm. Even if you understand exactly what's going on. 
which many people do, or, you know, have a very good framework for what's happening in their lives. That's not working. Even if they completely understand what that is that they need to do to stop operating that way, I still have found it nearly impossible yeah. in those moments of heightened stress where you get beyond that capacity to have any of that really make any difference. And at the end of the day, I believe that like where we're all selfishly mostly called to is what we really care about is the way that we feel probably more than, a, than what we really have probably even more than what our relationships give us at the end of the day. We're like, how do I feel right now? Do I like it or do I not like it? Yeah. That's kind of what it boils down to. Right. And so for a lot, a lot of, of that, by the way, is, is subconscious. I don't think that people walk around consciously going sure, like, sure, sure. how do I feel? It's just this program from a very young age, right? Because parents and guardians made us believe that when we're upset or when we're angry or when we're frustrated, like that's not okay. So it was always this game of like getting to this happy place all the time. And then as you get older, it becomes this thing that you just keep getting imprinted on, which is like, you have to be happy. You have to be happy. You ha right. And so I don't even know that it's a conscious thing, but like we subconsciously are upset when we don't think that we're living the way or feeling the way that we're supposed to be feeling. Sure. And you know, so when we're in that place, like that's the real question is like, what do you do when you have all the right information? What do you do when you already have the practices? What do you do when you apply those things? And it doesn't make a difference. Like sometimes it does. I'm not saying those things don't work. Sometimes you, you've built enough a capacity, enough capacity, stress comes into your life. You sit down, you meditate 30 minutes later. It ain't no thing. You're, you're right back into balance. But there are other times that, you know, in, in the words of Dr. Seuss, some things are coming that are going to scare you right out of your pants. And, 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 and when that happens and you're spinning out of control and you can't seem to find that ground in, inside of your system, you need people. And you don't just need, it's like, like, and then we go, okay, well, I need my family and my friends. Well, sometimes those people are part of that story and part of that tapestry that's causing stress. And then you step into that environment and you say, I have a problem. And you guys all know this because you've all had this experience. You go to somebody and they don't receive you the way that you need to be received, right? They just start problem solving for you or they're not really listening and you don't feel like they really got it, whatever that is for you. And it doesn't help. Like you, you just don't feel gotten, right? Um, and so something has shifted in, in our environment, you know, and I noticed that in our relationship, but also everyone around us who's doing uh, similar work, our clients, the students, it's like now in, in the environment, in our community, there is not just a body there, there's a, a, a tuned energy there and a tuned awareness there. And that is something that an individual can cultivate and train themselves to do. It's so a way that you are with people that's far beyond just intellectualizing or just being their body or being a good problem solver or even being a coach. It's, it's a tuned awareness through an energetic presence that, that doesn't mean much until you're doing these practices. But when you're doing these practices and you have people around you that have this awareness, it is life-giving and life-altering. And so for me, that also gave me confidence this year that when I was going through challenging places, like I could have pulled myself out, like I could have done all my success strategies, I could have done all the things I know to do. Um, and I've kind of learned not to do that. It's like, because every time you're you're in this anxious, scared, overwhelmed kind of states, there is an incredible opportunity there to um, not just build resiliency and well being in the system, but to get to a place in your life where you are liberated from this suffering and this fear that honestly always exists in your body. It's just sometimes it gets activated more. And sometimes it's like this low hum in the background, but it's always kind of there. If you look for it, like this concern of like things can go wrong or like what's going wrong. Right. And all these different types of things. And so like, you know, having that system around me, and again, I could speak for, I think a lot of our clients here, um, like suddenly gives you this confidence to go into the depth of that. Yeah. and go through it versus trying to get around it in a way that you would have never done before. And in, and in that way, it offered more healing than ever. And without going into all the things that have shifted, and then I'll throw it back to you, bro. Um, it's like, I kind of stayed in that energy for, I don't know, five or six months, like th this really unpleasant place. And it doesn't mean I liked it. I don't want to make it seem like I liked it. 
Um, but you know, that, those support systems, like I said, are really important. And then like popping out of it, you know, if Elon and I were to ring off a bullet point list of like what has happened in the three weeks since like coming out of that energy and stepping into this new energy, like how much flow in our lives, in our business, in our relationships, and you know, all these situations that was like, like a flood just opened. And that's what we often say. It's like, you can, you can do the mindset game alone. That's fine. It will help you. Like you'll, you know, you'll turn up the hose and you'll start getting, you know, a trickle of something and a little bit more energy flow in your life. Or you can go into more, you know, learn that set a foundation and go into the awareness and energetic space and open up like a waterfall that's falling on you and go through those experiences in a significantly raised um, energetic well-being in your system that you never experienced before. And suddenly you're like, oh, my God, like this is what's possible. And it is not due to effort and it is not due to achievement. It's not due to any of those things other than building and cultivating more stability ground and well-being in your system and then once you once you've done that for a period of time because we all have to learn first through doing and understanding then we got to put that on repetition over and over again until it becomes automatic and once it's become automatic in time it seeps into the subconscious and i want i want to offer that the subconscious is not just a part of the brain and the mind because we now know that there's um, neuron cells in the heart and in the stomach. And I'm sure we'll find them all over the body, which means that mind is not a function here. Mind is a function of all y'all, like all this, everything in you is mind is this, this thinking awareness. And so when we are able to bring that, that training to the subconscious, the subconscious part, what we're calling subconscious is really the source of how your reality manifests. And and reality, I always say, is an organic hologram. So it's like, if you want to change the hologram, most people are just trying to manipulate the hologram, but they don't understand that the hologram is really just a relationship energetically with you. And so if the energy doesn't change, you know, if you don't have stabilized energy, then your reality is going to look pretty chaotic. But if you stabilize that and you open your system to well-being, again, think of this energetically, you uh, are able to stabilize holding more energy in your system. The ground from which you operate is well-being, so energy of well-being, energy of stability, and like now, now the organic hologram is in relationship to that. Like things are going to change. Yeah, you know your how much money and abundance is, that you can receive in your life that's going to change your relationships and how people feel around you. That's going to change your ease and approaching your in, inner health. That's going to change. It affects every aspect of how you feel, think, and of course how reality shows up. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm here as a, not just a proponent, but as a, as a student, just like everybody else here, going through these deep experiences, going through this deep work and seeing what happens uh, on the other end of it. And it's just, you know, yeah, there's really no words for it. Yeah. And then the other thing that um, I want to offer is that you also learned this time kind of like the, the masochist version of, of staying in it versus the just allowing it to be there. Guy is like, has always been this like, you know, when, when, when I first saw that hat spiritual gangster, I was like, that's guy, you know, like guy, it didn't matter what he was doing. It was always to like the nth degree. There wasn't just like, I'm going to try this is like, I'm going to dive off the highest point and I'm going to take the, the steepest ride and like whatever. And so I feel like even in the few months that you went through this in the beginning, it was more like putting yourself in there like masochist style and like, I'm just going to go through this. Right. And then you found an easing in there somewhere where it was like, I can be here when it's here instead of like sticking my nose in it every single time. And that was huge for you because that was very new. It was like the way that you always did it was like, I'm just going to go full in. And I got to feel it all like once. And I, right. So that was, that was awesome to watch yeah. you even kind of like settle back almost and like yeah. be able to observe it and not just kind of like keep pushing into it. Yeah. Um, so and, really and, cool. and I wanted to tell everybody here, you know, you're listening, like, I, you know, whatever challenges you're dealing with, like I, I got to a really hopeless place this year uh, because like the challenges felt so great that it, it felt like it was uh, uh, risking my livelihood often, which wasn't true. And mentally I knew wasn't true, but I could not stop 
this experience yeah. from happening in my body, this, this deep sensation of pain, of loneliness. And like, there were days that like, there was a week where I'm like, none of this shit works. What the fuck are we doing? Fuck my teachers. Fuck mystery schools. Fuck spiritual work. I'm like, I just want to dive right back in, go grab all my identities that know how to be successful. that know how to, you know, hold me up. And then there was this little voice that's like, yeah, none of that is going to work. <laughs> like, like none of that you can go do that like you're going to find out that all this is going to fail and so like i I, you know part i don't want to say kick and scream the whole way but i had my my tantrum moments for sure throughout this experience and i think again that's important like as an adult we stop giving ourselves permission to feel depth of pain it's like oh i don't have time for that or like uh you know depth of emotion i don't have time for that like I shed more tears in the last six months than I probably have in in 38 years of my life. You know, there was a a grieving process that was happening for parts of me that I was sure I needed to get through this life in a successful way and to look a certain way. And like when all that kind of fell away, because that was really my experience, like all that like left, it was suddenly this moment of like, all that is just gone, not important. It was walking through a world like a wad of raw cookie dough and like everything is affecting me so much. Um, and it was, it was frightening. And again, it's like without, without people around me to ground my system on a regular basis, reaching out for support, like learning about that for five years now, you know, um, like all those little things that we share with you guys on a regular basis, like that's the work. And, and, and eventually, you know, eventually it's like really living in a state of surrender. You know, we talk about Michael Singer all the time and the surrender experiment. It's like, that to me is the key. It's like you want to be in as neutral state as possible, right? Like uh, appreciate and celebrate, but don't don't let yourself get like, you know, go on the, a ride with it and think that that's it and that you're attached to all this and like feel pain and experience your emotion, but like don't get drawn into that either. Like don't get on the bus and go for these long rides just observe that you are having these extremely dynamic experiences and that you're allowed to have them. They're allowed to be expressed. And, but it's like, it's really about holding that neutral state. And it's like, every time I find that pocket, I'm sure Elon would agree. It's like what unfolds in our lives is just, it, it, it is indescribable amount of pure magic that it's like, it doesn't even make sense how that much stuff that's, that's for you and supportive of you can happen in such a short period of time. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that, uh, you know, while, while guy was going through that and, um, guy had mentioned before that I have this avoidant strategy and just to give you guys a little bit of, of, uh, verbiage of where that comes from. There's a great book called attached and they talk about three different, uh, attachment styles. One of them is avoidant. One of them is anxious. So avoidant is like when things become too much or there's like too much charge or too much love or too much commitment or too much anything. My avoidant structure is like, I, I'm, I don't want to deal with this. And it kind of like disappears, right? Like I, I pull away. Whereas anxious, which is more guy, it's like when, when there's too much, it's like there's like a, a neediness, like a, a, a wanting someone there constantly. And so when someone, if you've ever been around someone who's needy, if you're avoidant, you know that like, as soon as you feel that you're like, ah, I don't want to be anywhere near that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so historically, as guy has gone through these, uh, you know, darker moments, he, as amazing as you guys experience him, right. When he's like, on fire teaching, et cetera. It's like guys pendulum is just as powerful when it swings in the other way. So like he can go from inspiring to just this, like, you know, black hole, black hole that literally wants to suck everything and everyone down with him. And, um, historically for me, that has been a very, very difficult place to stand. And so I didn't. And the thing is that when guy goes into that place, what he needs more than anything is he needs to know that you're there. And I haven't seen guy in this kind of state probably, I mean, he had mentioned it before, but like probably since he first did landmark like 19 years ago, I don't remember seeing him in this depth of it before. I mean, to the point that like, 
he literally one day on a call was like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Like I'm done. And I was like, what? He's like, I don't want to do this business. I don't want to do coaching. I don't want to do any of it anymore. And I was like, okay. So like, I know that's not guy speaking, right? I know like he's in pattern and all that stuff, but like you can imagine I can know that, but then I hear that and like, I'm not only his business partner, I'm his brother. So like, I know the pain that he's in. I know where this is all coming from. And at the same time, this is like painful for me to hear, right? And one of the things that was really amazing for me is I really got an opportunity through this process to be with the parts that want to avoid and finding new ways to stabilize my system to hold ground so deeply and hold a space so wide that I can hold guys charge because guys like, you know, if you guys have been around him, like he's, he's a very powerful being. And so whether he's powerful and inspiring, he can like light up a room or when he's powerful, like black hole wise, he can destroy the room. So okay, energy to, yeah, to be there and like with all that energy, you know, when he's fired up and all that stuff, like he lights me up and we just kind of like levitate each other but when he when he goes in the opposite direction it was it, it's it's been very difficult for me and listen it was it was very difficult for me at times too like i sat with our mentor and i was like how do you do it you know and and it's obviously easier for our mentor he doesn't have the the full history of of being a brother he's not invested in, in the business but like there's a lot of other stuff but he gave me some amazing tips and a lot of the times we would just sit in silence because in silence, I know that I could hold the energy and it didn't add all this other like mental structure to it, which could kind of like take me out or hit me and ping me a certain way and like kick in all that avoidant. And what was really interesting and what kind of started to come through was a guy had mentioned that, you know, like it's, it's the organic hologram and What's really interesting is when you start to do this work at first, it's, it's like very wibbly wobbly. You're like on a, like riding a bike. So you're just like very weirdly balanced. And then eventually you gain more balance and things like that. And now where we're at in our life is like, we've really cultivated this incredible states of well being and groundedness and safety. Like we can really like, at, I mean, I, I, I can honestly say that I live more in that, place than in other states today, which when I first started was like, I couldn't even believe that that was possible. And it is because I'm walking there. And because of that, it has allowed us to hold all of these things greater and greater and greater. And now what we're really focused on is like, okay, so you have this amazing energy that you've cultivated. Now the game is like, can you take this energy and put it in money? Can you take this energy and put it in relationship? Can you take this energy and put it on growing business with clients? So it's like the, the focus now is can you bring this energy through the hologram that is your life and actually have it feed and nurture everything that is your life? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of been the game. And like for us, you know, something in our business a guy always used to say this thing, like we always used to play tennis and I could play freely and guy was the one keeping score. And he's like, I can't focus because all I'm doing is trying to keep score. And if I know that I'm losing, I like get upset. Meanwhile, I'm just hitting balls. Like I'm, I'm just playing. And so what came out was that the same thing was kind of happening with our business and like looking at numbers and the finances. And I just wasn't like, Part of it was from an avoidant place. Part of it was from this place of just, I trusted and I knew that things were going to just always work out because historically that's how they've always been. But Guy was the one like keeping score, right? And when he was keeping score, it would create anxiety and anxiousness and like see this number and that would create a certain thing and see that number and that would create a certain thing and it would just kick up all these processes. And I realized that I was leaving them all, all alone on this island to deal with all this stuff. Because for me, I was just like, okay, I could just kind of sit in the background and do my thing and I'll play. And that you can see like for the anxious style that creates this whole 
system of fear because like everything is now on him and he's got to like take care of all that stuff. And so what I realized through the years, my relationship to money has shifted so much because I've just done so much work on my safety and well-being that like I saw numbers and it was like nothing. I, like it didn't even impact me. And then I had this moment, I'm talking to, one, to our mentor and I was like, holy shit. If we're trying to make money grow and business grow, and my energy is like all the way out here, right? Because there's no intentionality. There's no focus on it. It's just like, oh, it'll be there. It'll be there. Guy, meanwhile, is in there, like looking at the numbers. And, and as he's looking at the numbers, the energy that he's imbuing is like anxiety, right? Fear, anxiety, stress, like all that kind of stuff. So now imagine like if this is this is what I'm talking about, energy put into something, right? So the energy behind the action is what's going to predicate your results. So if the energy behind the action is you're looking at something and it's bringing you anxiety and stress and overwhelm, guess what you will continue to manifest? More anxiety, more stress, and more overwhelm. Because it's literally, it's like, if you think of like, that's the water that you're feeding the seed with. So like you're literally pouring anxiety, stress, and overwhelm onto the seed and hoping that something miraculously beautiful is going to grow. So then I'm sitting there and I'm going, holy crap, like, we have the yin and no yang. So the yin is out there all by himself. And like, meanwhile, I've cultivated this amazing ability to just sit and be with and have like nothing, nothing there, just ground, well-being, all this stuff with numbers. And I'm like, wow, we haven't imbued any of that into this because I've just kind of been in like la la land over here doing my thing. And so I'm talking to my mentor and he's like, Elon, like you have resource where together, if you guys met and actually started to look at these nitty gritty details that you've just been totally avoiding, like, can you imagine what will happen? And it was the first, I just sat there and I was like, holy shit. Like this, it's time to take this cultivated energy and place it on the things that matter most in my life and start watering with that place. And Honestly, like, bro, I think we had that initial conversation. It couldn't have been more than a one month ago. I think, I think one conversation we had and like everything changed. That was a what? Like a, maybe a month and a half ago, something along those lines? Not even because yeah. our last event was the November 15th and 16th and it's only December 15th. So it like now would be, we probably had that right after the event. So we're talking like not even four weeks yet. Yeah. So it was just this, you know, this moment of, kind of like, whoa, okay. Then getting back into conversation with Guy and sharing with him like all the ways that I've been and how I've kind of been leaving him alone on this island and that I'm not committed to that. And here's what we're committed to. And this is, and then creating structures in place of like, how are we going to go about that? So you don't feel like that, like that we're actually in this together. And so we started to create twice a week meetings where we're like structuring things and looking at things. And not with the intention of like, okay, this number, this number, this number, blah, 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 but not, just not, not to fix things. Exactly. Just to have awareness, be aware of what is actually happening. Because if awareness doesn't have the information, right? Like this is not giving the mind the information. This is giving awareness the information and allowing awareness to feed us new possibilities, new information, new ideas, new whatever. And it, it was inside of that, that I'm, I'm not kidding you guys. Like we went from a month of basically not knowing how we're going to keep the lights on in the business to basically generating right around seven figures in a span of about four weeks, three weeks, three weeks. Like, just, just get that. It's, this is what we talk about. It's not like a linear thing. It's a jump into a different timeline where all this other shit that you were dealing with or thinking that you need to figure out, like it's just gone. There's, there's no need to mess with all that because you, you almost jump into this place. Yeah, I just ahead. want to say it's like even in, even in relationships or anything else, it's like there is a paradigm that you're living in, but it's not mental. It's energetic. It's like an energy bubble. And you don't know the, you don't even know where the uh, limitations that are. You're so in it. 
It's yeah. so part of the output and input signal that your body's doing with the reality. And in a second, and I'm sure some of you guys have had transformative moments where it's like that paradigm just pops. It's like popping a bubble. And then it's just everything that was holding that together is just gone. And really, you're just in this this like state of possibility. Now, what's going to happen in that state? Who knows? It could be uh, relationships come in or opportunities come in or it could be a bajillion things can happen. Right. But like like that, like what Elon just said, you know, to go from three weeks of like, OK, wow, we're not really sure we can pay our employees to seven figures basically showing up in the account within a matter of three weeks. It doesn't even make any sense. You know, there was some reality being held together. And and once that reality got settled, like, and I could tell you in 10 years that Elon and I, and Elon and I have been in business together. I think we figured out for like 15 or 16 years now, but 10 years doing this online stuff, Satori Prime, like this is the more, most settled I have felt down. And it, and I'm telling you, it's not like we haven't had these conversations before. Yeah. About what needs to happen, why these meetings need to happen, structures that need to be built. And it's like, it's almost like you legitimately can't help yourself. Again, subconsciously, through your parts, they will just do things and you'll avoid doing those things. And you'll you'll come up with the perfect rationale why you haven't done it yet or why there's not enough time. or And it all makes perfect sense from that energy. Even exactly when you know like none of this is, is functional, like you need to do something else. You It's like you literally can't until the energy changes. And, and that's why I want to call back to like, the main thing is, guys, like for me, you want to transform your life. It's like stop working on the hologram. There is a there is a uh, a structure to your energy. There's like a way that it's put together, just like a molecule, right? It has certain structures when you look at CO2 and it's all structured in a certain way. And unless that configuration changes, you don't change to a different element. Yeah. Right. It's like and that's what we're really doing internally with this type of work. It's you are changing the configuration of your energetic field that changes the way your atoms and cells and everything operates. But we call that the subconscious because it's the part that you're not mentally in control of. However, you are the gatekeeper of that. You are the thing that's filtering the information that's either coming in or out of the, that subconscious based on how your reality is showing up. That's showing you what your subconscious is doing. So if what you are looking at, you don't like, you got to get clear that you're outputting something that's generating that. And whether you like that sensation that's occurring in your body or not while that's happening, doesn't matter. Like the subconscious is extremely literal in the way that it gets commands from, from the part of you that's aware. And so, and that's what we get to shift is like when the awareness changes, you can impact that. When you impact that, your reality is going to just shift. We've seen it time and time again, over and over again. We, you know, Elon and I have made a lot of money over the years. And we've never been able to create structures in our business that have allowed that money to grow in excess. It's always been like, there's a lot here. Somehow it, like we use it, disappears, and then we're back in this kind of state. But like, that's our programming. That's what we have known since was, we were- Was peas, our programming. Yeah, well, that, that's exactly, that was our programming. And since we were peas in the pod, we that's the family that we grew up in. And it's like to maintain that story, to maintain that energy, like always having to grind, always having to work hard, always having to like, you know, do more, da, 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 like it has to stay in play. And if that doesn't shift, that configuration doesn't shift, then like you're going to keep creating a reality that puts you in situations to play out your identity. And so like that, that's what gets to change. And I, I feel like that's where we've made, I mean, like just strides, like you know, intense strides, certainly this year, but in the last few years, um, all across the board and like, you know, to be yeah, here okay. now and to tell you like, I've never felt this stable, in our relationship with our company and like what we're doing, it's like, it's just amazing. Yeah. The, the, you, you brought up this word foundation, which I think is so critical. It's like, it's, it's not sexy to work on foundation or the thing that's under the ground, right? Like in our country, for example, something that came to light is, you know, we've built our infrastructure in this country over a hundred years ago. So like you're talking about water pipes that are underground and all that stuff that have just been there for like, a hundred years, they were supposed to last for 60. Right. So it's like we have rust and like there's, there's cities in this country right now that have not been able to drink water for the last year because they need to boil their own water. Like, just think about that. Like number one country, well, I don't know, number one country in the world, but like well, one well, of the top countries in the world, right? Yeah. Like we can't even get our basic water in certain cities. Okay. But like to invest 
time, energy, and money, which is you're talking like billions, if not trillions of dollars to redo this infrastructure underground, no one wants to do it because it's underground. It's not like a sexy skyscraper. It's not highways that you're driving on. It's not like a shopping. It's none, nothing that you're going to see. It's going to be done. You will have not even known that it was done, right? And foundation work is kind of like that. It's not sexy. It's not flashy. It's not something that you can show off to your friends and go like, oh my God, do you want to see how much well-being and safety I have in my system? They're like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. And at the same time, what we got really clear on over the last six months is we were with all the best of intentions and all the tools that we had, we were really putting in a lot of effort to make things grow and scale. But when the foundation is not there, energetically, the universe cannot, will not send you what it is that you need to build on top of this foundation because it knows I'm going to send it to you and it is going to crumple you. And then you're out there, you're like, but I want more. So whether it's your health, whether it's your relationships, whether it's your grief, whether it's your money, what if you just like realize that it has nothing to do with any of that stuff, but there's like a foundation piece that I haven't looked at or dealt with. And when you deal with the foundation piece, it's like the universe always wants to give it to you. Right? The universe is not stingy. The universe is not like, you don't deserve it because you didn't call your mom. It, it's like, you're a divine being. It wants to give it all to you. It's an so if it's judge. not coming to you, mm -hmm. that means that there's something that you haven't quite adjusted yet to be able to create the platform to receive that on. And I feel like for the last six months, that's the work that we did. It wasn't sexy. It didn't feel good. It mm -hmm. was, it was ongoing onslaught. Like it was brutal at time, like the whole deal. And now again, on the other side of it, if someone was like, Hey, I need you to spend six months working on your foundation. And then we're going to give you this, 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 this. You'd be like, let's fucking go. Like, what do you want me to do? Right. But when you're in it, it's very difficult to have that kind of enthusiasm. And yeah, someone asked, is any of that work available at level two? Yeah, that's exactly Absolutely. where we start. Mm -hmm. You know, like our when we created the structure of level one, two, three, and we actually have four now as well, but um, that's the whole idea. It's like level one, if you think about awareness is trapped in mind, and that's why people deal so much with mind and even personal development works in mind, right? So the first step is we want to shift awareness out. The second step, which is level two, is now bringing awareness into our body. Because awareness is not comfortable being in here, it's never been in here. And this is where all the stuff that you've been avoiding, like the plague for decades, lives. So it's like, I don't want to be in there. Right? That's where you start to work on the foundation. And that's level two work. That's like the self to self healing. And then level three is now you're able to stabilize in here. And you add now moving the awareness out here. So now you're in and out, like all the way through. Right. And so, yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing. I, I, again, I just, where I started, I'm just so immensely grateful for all the pieces and layers that we had to go through in order to be able to be in the last six months, the way that we've been in the last six months, because without all the five, six years of work that we did prior to that, this last six months would have most certainly been the end of Satori Prime. Good story. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it was, you know, as, as critical as, as that, but you know, th those, those were definitely considerations at the time. Like, you know, are we, are we going to continue that at the end of the day? Like for me, you know, if I'm not serving people, I think I would lose my mind altogether. So I'd have to find something to do with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to, we're going to pin it here. Uh, we may record one more. We may not uh, we'll share a little bit more about this stuff for sure. Yeah. We're, uh, we're definitely taking kind of a hiatus for the remainder of the year and recharging and, um, 
doing inner work and external work and really doing all that foundation stuff that we were just talking about. Um, we have about half a month to go. So today's the 15th while we're recording this. So whenever you listen to this, I just want to let you guys know that January 1st, all prices on all our programs, because the programs are just the bomb, uh, are all going up. Um, we've just realized like the value in these programs are absolutely so silly. And like we have underpriced all of our programs. So it's time that we get to level up. Um, the offerings are bigger, better, more amazing. Like, so in light of that, what I want to offer you is that, uh, we still have openings that you can apply and get into level one before the end of the year. Um, and you can do that at what will be probably less than 50% of what the price will be on January 1st. So if you want to give yourself an amazing end of year, Christmas, Festivus, Kwanzaa present, uh, now would be a really, really good time. So go to uh, callsatori.com and you can book a call, fill out a quick application, book a call with our team. They're on standby waiting for you and they can instruct you and guide you um, to whatever is the next best place for you. And yeah, we're excited to, uh, to take you guys on this journey. Without. Love you all. Happy holidays. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.